Hey, good evening, seven o'clock, exactly p.m. It is April 2nd, and I plan on going to bed pretty early tonight because I'm pretty tired. Um, I had one of those boring days, and I found it just draining, extremely draining. So I'm always excited to go to bed just to shut my brain down because obviously when you're in the situation, the only thing that floats around in your mind is just a bunch of negative garbage that I really don't want to deal with. But I wanted to make this video because I was doing some thinking about um, the squabbling that goes on when you are dealing with gang stalking. And oftentimes, um, when it comes to women, <clears throat> uh, one of the reasons why single women get targeted mainly because they're, they're looked upon as being, you know, unconventional. When, when you really look at the situation, sometimes people are in situations that put them in this situation. I mean, put them in a position where they do leave unconventional lives not on purpose like they're trying to be a rebel it's just that they've been dealt with certain issues in their life and then this is the result of it like for example i've been you know pretty much abused in my family many years with my uh, my ex-family and then um you know when i got married uh, obviously his family was doing things behind the scenes. So this does create a lot of distrust. And then especially when you're dealing with gang stalking and you have people who know who you are and then they have their agendas or whatever. <clears throat> so, but uh, throughout the course of my life though, um, you know, um, I, I, I'm, I don't, you know, I, I just prefer not to be married. Okay. That's just how it is. And I don't know, maybe my family feels a certain connection. My ex-blood family, uh, feels a certain connection to Joel's family. I don't know, you know, um, and they might look at it as a form of immaturity if a woman doesn't want to get married. And it's not about immaturity. It's immaturity when you know good and well that you don't want to devote yourself to somebody and then you turn around and get in a relationship knowing that it's going to be very taxing on you emotionally and everything else to be with the person that you don't, especially you don't love that person. And I don't love that person. Okay. Um, and I don't, and that's not me saying it because, oh, you're her, you're this, you're that. No, when somebody does something like this to you, it's a normal reaction to fear this person in a way where you just want to get away from them. Also, um, I know there's a lot of people who pick on women who, um, or anybody really, uh, who, you know, who dresses nice or takes care of themselves. But in reality, um, I'm not going to feel bad about that. I'm not going to. And I know a lot of times when people do that, they're doing it because there's a lot of jealousies and power plays. And so they use stupid things or they try to accuse you of things <clears throat> of like, for example, some women <clears throat> are accused of getting ahead by, uh, because they might be relatively nice looking because they take care of themselves. They might wear nice clothes. Um, they might get their hair done at professional salons or whatever. I'm not quite that, you know, high maintenance where I buy a bunch of stuff like that, but some people are. Um, but they, um, they get accused of, you know, using sexuality in order to advance themselves. And this is something that, um, it's a very common, uh, reaction from people and it's done out of jealousy. It really is. It's done out of jealousy. Um, <clears throat> because everyone knows who has half a brain in their mind knows good and well that you're supposed to take care of yourself. you you are. Okay. I mean, people can argue it, you can debate it, but there is no way in the world you're going to convince me that going the opposite direction is the right way to live. You're just not. Okay. Um, I have never used, um, uh, sexuality to advance my career in any way, shape or form. As a matter of fact, you know, I, I mentioned that I had, um, several female bosses and they were straight. So obviously that would have not have done me any good. I just personally believe that, um, this is my belief since I was a kid and this is what I, I chose to live by that, you know, these things are important, meaning I like clothes. Okay. I do like clothes. Okay. I do. I love them. I like, I like style. I like looking at people who wear styles. I mean, I like fashion shows. I like these things. This is not a sign of immaturity. It is simply just a hobby that I take interest in. Okay. I think when clothes are tailored well 
and they are made of good material or whatever. Of course, I can't afford certain things like that, but when I see them, I'm, I'm like, yeah, I like clothes. I like, you know, the history of them. I like seeing people wear them. I look at people when I'm out in town, what are they wearing? I saw a lady just recently. She was an older lady. Um, she was with her husband. She had this really nice maroon color outfit on with uh, matching tights, boots and everything. And this is something that I like. It's something that I like, it has nothing to do with drawing the attention of um, the opposite sex. And so, you know, oftentimes when you, um, the, the, when you really look at people and their accusations, you can see that there's a lot of um, jealousies and um, their, their remarks that are meant to give you, the remarks, least remarks are made to uh, make you lose credibility. And this is one of the first things, the first things that they attack you with when you are dealing with gang stalking or, or when it comes to women, okay? There are some men who get atta uh, attacked by this. Like there's some men who are not necessarily gay, but instead of wearing like, you know, jeans and a buffalo shirt, some men prefer more of the stylish type things. And because they, they get manicures or whatever, they're a little bit more effeminate than <laughs> other men, they can get picked on for that. Okay. And you know, we, we, in, in life, you know, you hear about, you know, standing up for what you believe in and not changing for other people just because you're going to get more accepted by them. There is no point in trying to gain acceptance from people who you don't like. I don't like these people. I, I mean, I don't like anybody who's going to sit here and try to bully me or try to make me feel ashamed of who I am. Now, going back to the issue um, that I mentioned earlier, um, about my clothes hobby um you know um when i was married you know he never acted as if he had an issue with it as a matter of fact he encouraged it in many ways i mean like you know we'd go to the fabric store there were times he mentioned hey there's a new store like i mentioned the little place over on ming avenue he said there's a new store opening up let's you know let's go check it out so we checked it out that was his idea not mine um so it's not about um obviously you know when you go to work there's a certain way that you dress okay you dress professionally, okay? Um, you make sure that you are tidy, you know? Um, I, I have worn wigs in the past and hair extensions, mainly because I'm a black woman and I think my hair should be groomed, okay? Sometimes, you know, there's a lot of dippity do or whatever you wanna call it, like um, they call this particular product, um, I don't know what you call it, but anyway, it's something that slicks a little fly out pieces that are shorter than other pieces and it kind of keeps everything all down. So I try to groom myself as well as you possibly can, okay? And it has nothing to do with the opposite sex. Now, some people will pick on women who um, who choose to wear makeup, and that's always been in society, there's always been some women who do and some women who don't. Now, the last job interview that I went to, there was a woman who was interviewing me, and it seems like all the women that I've interviewed were wearing like thick, thick, thick gobs of makeup. This last lady that was I interviewed with, she had like, you know, a lot of eyeliner. She had her fake eyebrows painted on. She she was a white woman and she had what I consider to be very dark lipstick or whatever. Um, and so nobody's picking on these women, right? Nobody picks on these women, but they always pick on me. And I get tired of that. I get real tired of it. Um, and it, it's wrong, okay? And I don't believe that this particular woman is doing this because she's trying to gain the attention of male, get male attention. She's probably doing it because it adds color, it coordinates with her outfit, maybe lifts her mood or whatever, it has nothing to do with this. There has always been a certain percentage of women who do these, and a lot of, I see a lot of older women who do this. Married women, women who lost their spouses in death, women who've been divorced for many years, it has nothing to do with anything, nothing at all. If I was interested in dating somebody, okay, obviously I have a lot of time on my hands, more time on my hands than you can even imagine. Okay. Uh, of course, I don't know if the bars are open now because of the coronavirus, <laughs> but all these months that went by, okay, if I was interested in dating somebody, okay, I would be doing that. I would be out there dating someone right now if that was my intention, but it's not my intention. And this is the very fact that I'm not dating someone. Don't make, don't misunderstand that because your people are thinking, well, she's not dating anyone because she still loves her ex-husband. Bullshit. No, I don't. I do not love that person. And I will tell you after you've dealt with something like this. Okay. 
something traumatizing like this, and it is extremely traumatizing. Everything from the cult-based mind control to, you know, being set up, being told one thing, and then working the strings behind the other, all of that, okay, it destroys, it destroys your trust in people. So no, it's not. It's just, you know what, um, in my life, I, I'm understanding who I am. I'm understanding who I am. I don't want to be married, okay? I don't want to have any more children. I don't want to take care of anyone else's children. Now, some people think, oh, what if he has a kid? Then you can raise it. And and some people think this is good because it's good for a person because it's going to help tie you down. It's going to whatever. Let me tell you something what happens to people who get themselves in this situation with children that they don't really love. I would never beat a child. I would never purposely ignore a kid. But when you don't really have a connection to somebody, that kid's going to feel it. So there's a lot of people who come up with dumb ideas, okay? Maybe their heart might be in the right place, but it's ultimately a dumb idea, okay? Because you don't want to bring children into, you know, situations that can cause can cause problems. So all these things that get said about me, um, I put it in, it goes in one ear and out the other, okay? Because no matter what I do in this world, okay? I, my standards are always going to be judged, okay? Just because I have darker skin than the, the rest of these people who live in this community, okay? I'm a black woman, okay? Let me reiterate this. I'm a black woman in a predominantly white area, okay? Or Hispanic area, which to me, I consider Hispanic people pretty much white, okay? So I understand. I understand that people are going to always look at me. People, there's going to be people who don't like me. There's going to be people who are going to... Uh, pick on certain things. That's life. Okay. You cannot expect everyone in this world to like you. You just can't. Okay. And so I know what it's like to try to fit in. Like I remember when, before I realized that my family was involved in the bullying at my other jobs. Okay. I remember, you know, when I was younger, my inexperience of dealing with how to deal with, I understand that these people were like bullying me, but I, I wanted to make peace. I kept thinking, well, I'll just go ahead and do this to try to make peace. In fact, it only made the matter worse. It only made it worse. So my thing is, is that you have to stand up for yourself, okay? Just like, you know, there's certain things that people covet, right? And I, I do believe that my, um, what do you call it? What is her name? My ex-husband, whose mom he has a sexual relationship with, okay? I believe that she feels like I'm a threat to her and her relationship with her with with her son, which is really strange because I'm not. I'm not a threat to her. I don't want anything to do with them. But um, you know, when when people possess things that another person doesn't have, they they can be very jealous. Okay, and some people might look at me and they think, well, you know, she um she takes care of herself, and that so for some people, some petty people, instead of making changes, positive changes for their own life. And try to do something to get themselves out of the situation they're in. They just want to tear you down. Okay. And I, under, I understand there's no way in the world you're going to ever convince me that I'm wrong. Because I'm not wrong. Okay. In society we have this really warped way of. Society promotes a very warped way of thinking. Okay. They want you. They introduce you to all these stupid like uh, diet supplements. All these forms of different diet fad diets that come out gym memberships, all these sort of things, right? But if a person was to take advantage of all of those things and then get down to their goal weight or whatever they want to do, they reach their goal, then what, what does society do to that person? They turn around, gossip about them, stab them in the back, sabotage them, and do all kinds of horrible bullying type tactics. It doesn't make any sense, right? Because everybody understands that these are the sort of things that people are supposed to try to do, okay? But when somebody actually does it, then they, then here comes the, the horns coming out of their head, all right? So I'm not going to feel guilty about for, about that. Also, I get tired of people assuming that just because I take care of myself that there's going to be a love interest at work. No, there's not. I understand. I am all I have. I'm all I have. That's it, okay? So taking the chances of having a relationship at work is a stupid idea for several reasons. Number one, um, you're going to ruin your reputation. Okay. That's your job. Okay. And you know, I understand when I was sitting here in, in this community, not doing a damn thing wrong. Okay. I didn't do anything and people jumped on me 
for shit that they were making up out of their ass. They were literally grabbing up, making up bullshit, okay? So could you imagine if I actually did have a relationship, a boyfriend at work? I can imagine, I can tell you right now, the, the hammer would be coming down on Maria, all right? So I wouldn't even do that. Aside from that, like I said, my mind is about taking care of me. This is the only thing I care about, period. So these things, these, these typical, common, everyday, petty bickering and arguing and stupid shit that I hear or I'm, I'm picking up or that I understand, or at least I believe I understand, <clears throat> are nothing new. They're nothing new. Um, and it's wrong, but I will say that it's wrong, okay? Um, I personally think that every woman should take care of herself. Now, some don't, and that's their choice. I know a lot of tomboy-type women. They're not necessarily lesbians, but they just they don't care about that sort of stuff, okay? That's okay for them, okay? But I'm, you know, I like being a woman. I love being a woman. I do. I do. Some women love it more than others, okay? Some people get, like, the full thing. They're constantly going to spa places, getting facial, mas facial masks and massages. And if that's what they like to do, that's fine. I, I don't go all into that, okay? But I enjoy color. I enjoy uh, the vibrant feeling of uh, putting on a new coat or putting on a new shirt or, you know, shoes or whatever. Yeah, I do. I enjoy those things. And it's not a crime to do so, okay? And I get tired of people saying, well, she uses this to get ahead. That's bullshit and you know it. That is bullshit and you know it, okay? So I get tired of that. But I know anybody who says that, is pretty much making shit up out of their ass, okay? I'm not going to apologize for my views. I'm not going to, okay? I personally think that, you know, it's um, a good thing. You know, just like I was I was talking about the lady, her name is Lynn. She's like almost 70 years old and she she's into fashion and um, it has nothing to do with male attention. It's just the fact that she appreciates clothes. She was talking about how certain outfits bring out certain parts of her personality. Like when she's feeling shy, certain times she slips into a certain pair of pants maybe or whatever, and then she feels like she can she can conquer it, she can do it. She can, you know, it gives her a little bit more. And I think there's a lot of great things that people can get benefits from in clothes, okay? I'm, I love clothes, I do, okay? I really do, but to uh, accuse me of using uh, uh, my looks or something like that in order to get advanced, that's bullshit. That is bullshit. And that is something, if anybody who ever does that, I, I cut them off, okay? I cut them off because obviously these people are the kind of people who are going to be competitive, they're jealous or whatever. I don't need to deal with that shit, okay? I, I don't, I don't deal with that. Um, so yeah, I mean, I hear this a lot. And I think it's wrong and it's a form of discrimination. And to bring this up in the workplace, it is like kind of, it leans on sexual harassment. It does, you know, to assume something and be so forceful about it um, and discriminating about it. Now, I understand like, for example, if you're wearing low cut dresses, I mean, low cut blouses, short mini skirts or something, I, I can understand where that would be inappropriate. Okay. And nobody's wearing that at work. I don't even wear that on my free time. Okay. I don't, I don't wear anything like that. But when you listen to this sort of squibble squabble gobbledygook and you can pretty much tell that it's bullshit because it is bullshit. Just like the lady who, who gave, who, who interviewed me a few days, a few weeks ago, or was it a month ago? Whatever. Every day is the same. But um, I just recently saw her when I went into her store. She's a retail manager. I saw her. I didn't make a big deal out of it. I just like, okay, I saw her. But I didn't, you know, I understand. Now, if she was the same type person who didn't hire me, for that job interview based on these particular bullshit reasons, well then obviously she's jealous because she's doing the same thing and then she's doing far more than I do, okay? She's got the painted on eyebrows, she's got the bright red lipstick, she's got all this stuff going. And so then let me ask you something. So is there bullshit going on or there's bullshit going on? And it's bullshit going on. So anyway, <laughs> I just wanted to say that real quick and I'm gonna wrap up this video. I hope you all have a wonderful evening and I hope all the targeted individuals are staying safe. Wrapping this video up. Take care. Bye-bye.